just me. <laughs> I was going to conquer the world. I was 19 years old, recently graduated from high school in the top 10% of my class and a student body president. I was raised by a mom that was a single mom, and it made me fiercely independent. I didn't need anyone or anything to take care of me. I could take care of myself, and I was going to conquer the world. Oh yeah, and I was doing that by starting a position in Japan. Easy. I could do this. I was raised in Germany until I was nine years old. I knew how to integrate into other cultures. I knew how to navigate my way. I'd learned early. I am the granddaughter of a Sicilian immigrant who came to America to find a better way for his family. I come from a really long line of resourceful people. Japan, I got this. Did I mention that I don't speak Japanese? And did you know that the Japanese, they don't use an alphabet like we do. They have characters that they call kanji. And let me tell you, there is no faking being able to understand or read kanji. So I got to Japan and realized very quickly that this was going to be a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be. You see, I'm a five foot eight redhead with freckles. I'm pretty outgoing and I have an opinion. I was in a country ranked 105th out of 136 on the gender and equality gap report. I stuck out like a sore thumb. I had no idea or understanding of their social dynamics. And I had freckles. They were in awe of me. And I realized very quickly that I was going to have to change a little bit of the way I perceive things in order to get an understanding. Now, you may be thinking that this arrogant American packed up her stuff and hightailed it out of there, but I didn't. I was not going to tuck my tail between my legs and go home in shame. No, not a chance. I was sent there with a job to do, and I was going to make it happen. And I'm so glad I did. Because for nearly three years, I navigated a culture that was so different from my own. And I learned so much about how to develop and embrace relationships and different dynamics to develop fruitful relationships. Because you see, when I was on my way there, I had made horrible assumptions. I had made horrible assumptions about what I'd experienced and what that experience was going to look like and how I could handle it. So I took some time to think. And I am so glad, because what I have learned is that in our professional environments, nobody cares what you want. They only care about what their needs are. And in order to be successful, we have to change the way we perceive other things and take a moment to look through another lens to be successful and create relationships. That's what it takes. How many of us feel like foreigners in our own firms? How many of us feel like we don't speak the same language? We don't understand social dynamics. We as marketers, sometimes we don't look the same, we don't act the same, and in many instances, we're navigating our own gender inequality gap. But if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. It's a quote by Dr. Wayne Dyer, and one that provides me inspiration in terms of the way that I approach relationships. And it's a great way of focusing on getting a different perspective to get to a successful result. But why do we care about looking at things from a different perspective? What does it matter? It matters because when we make assumptions, we are accepting things for truth without truly understanding what they are and what is the truth about them. We as humans are wired that way. We as humans accept things and make assumptions all the time, but mostly for safety reasons. So if you see a scary looking dude in the alley, you might see him, you'll make an assumption that he's not a good guy and you're gonna head the other way, which is a good thing. But when we do that in our professional environments, it causes big challenges. 
we become overconfident, which was certainly the case when I made my way to Japan. We misunderstand people, and we miss enormous opportunities. But there are so many ways that we can change that and look at things from a different perspective. And there are five ways that I learned that when I was navigating through Japan. And the first thing that we have to do is listen. Listen with our ears, listen with our eyes, and listen with our hearts. Pay attention to people. Pay attention to the words that they're using. Put down your pen and paper and focus on them. Focus on the message that they're delivering and the mo emotion behind it. While you're doing that, pay attention to their nonverbal communication. There was a study done by a professor at UCLA that uncovered the 93% rule. And that rule is that only 7% of the message we convey is in the words that we speak. The other 93% of the message we deliver is in our body language, our tone of voice, our eye contact, our facial expressions, anything but words that we use. I was reminded this recently by a client that I was on the phone with, and we'd been talking about a very important strategy. And he said to me, Stacy, I hate that we're having this conversation over the phone. I need to see your face so I can believe that what you're saying is something that you truly believe is the right direction for us to go in. And it reminded me of how important one-on-one -on -one communication is in person. We miss so much of the message when we are not able to take in the other communication that doesn't happen through words. So the third thing that we can do to get a view from other people's perspectives is to focus our attention outwards. Focus our attention away from ourselves and on the things that are happening around us. Focus on behavior and what is happening outside of ourselves. When I went to Japan, I was very forceful. I was very direct. I would walk into a room and I was gonna own it and take control. It didn't work. And unfortunately, in many instances, I was considered disrespectful and rude, which was certainly not my intention. This was not going well. And I had to figure out a way to get to a better understanding. So I started paying attention to the women that I worked with and the way that they approached things, the way that they approach conversations. And I learned a lot about their culture. When I was doing that, though, I thought that they were weak. I thought they were insecure, and I thought they weren't respected. The way they approached things was not my way, and it didn't seem like the right way. But I absolutely learned that they were absolutely not insecure, and they weren't weak, and they were highly respected. But it took time for me to understand that they had lived a lifetime in this culture and had embraced and understood the way that relationships happen in their world. They had had a long time to develop that approach, and I was going to need to take a lead from them, which leads me to my fourth point, and that is not to judge. I judge those women because they didn't act the same way that I did. How many of us judge every day in every situation? We put people in boxes. We assign things to them we have no idea are true. We make a judgment call about someone because we do or do not like their shoes. We put them in boxes, we make a first impression, and then it takes a really long time for us to change our perspective about that person. When we judge people, we are not giving them the benefit of the doubt, and we miss out on amazing opportunities to embrace and meet new people and have fruitful, really fruitful relationships. My mother remarried many years ago, and when I first met her husband-to-be, I thought he was a loudmouth redneck that spent a lot of time annoying my sister and I. He did, however, I got to know him, and I was wrong. And he is an amazing individual who is extremely well-respected by his colleagues. He manages an enormous team of hundreds of people in our nation's capital to provide security for us to make sure that we're safe. 
He is no redneck and he is still loud. However, the thing that I absolutely learned was that he loves my mom with all his heart. And how sad would that have been for her? What a missed opportunity it would have been for her if she would have made the same judgment I did and didn't give him the chance. She would have missed out on years of companionship by someone who adores her. We have to stop judging. The fifth way that we can build experience by looking at things from a different perspective is to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Literally. Think about their motives and where they're coming from. When I was in Japan, I had to do a lot of that. I had to do a lot of understanding where it is that they came from and their cultural dynamics. I was having a conversation with my grandfather, my Sicilian grandfather, many years ago. It was during my second opportunity to vote for our President of the United States, and we were having a very lively conversation about one of the topics that the presidents were debating. And my grandfather and I did not agree. And he said to me, women should have never been given the right to vote. I was devastated. <laughs> I was so upset and I was furious. But being the patriarch of our family, there was no way I was raising my voice or getting angry with him. And I left very, very disappointed. It was hurtful and I couldn't believe that he would say that to me. But now after reflection and as time went on, I came to realize that my grandfather's worldview had been shaped by 80 years of experience that I did not live. His perspective was based on his experience of growing up with a patriarchal Italian family father who ruled with an iron fist and he was in control. He was the man of the house and no one disagreed with him. My grandfather was a devout Catholic and he had traveled the world around the country in many Middle Eastern countries where women are not held at the same level as men. It was just his life experience that had molded that opinion. Now that didn't mean that I agreed with it, but it certainly helped me understand where he was coming from and get to a place where not only did I understand why he may say something like that, but I took away the anger when I talked with him or thought about what he would say and took it out from an emotional response and it changed the way I perceived his opinion. What relationships could we create if we did not approach things from an I'm right and you're wrong attitude? What powerful relationships could we create if we practice those five things of listening with intention, paying attention to nonverbal communication, focusing our attention outside of ourselves and around us, not judging and putting ourselves in other people's shoes? What powerful relationships could we create it takes courage. It takes courage to focus on something else but ourselves. It takes courage to do it. But I'm telling you, you can. And when you start to practice skills that are not about you, you too will be ready to conquer the world. Thank you.